Hello gamers, my name is Duma and welcome to the game room. Thank you so much to everyone who participated on the poll. If you wanted to see this video guide or not, you were loud and clear and I got you covered. Today, we have the update to the best one bar warden build for the archive and this one is a beast. The previous version cruised straight to Arc 10 solo and I'm beyond confident that this can do the same and beyond. When I play tested this, I had no intention of actually pushing very far that day on stream. The goal was to check logs for status effect generation and damage and whatnot after a couple focused efforts. I genuinely didn't take the run very seriously and had some early goofy deaths, but we just kept pushing and Arc kept falling down and we ended up in arc 9 with it. But that absolutely is not the ceiling. It's an improvement over the previous version. I have the Twitch VOD posted for you in the video description with the full run if you want to see the build in action as well. This one is not very complicated at all. If you've played any of the previous versions of this, there is a lot of overlap. If you haven't, don't worry, I'll give you all the tools you need to succeed and I'm also going to go over some early arc changes to speed that up for you as well. The written guide is up and available for you now over at thegameroom.tv. Let's give it a dee dee bop bop and skid it. Let's skip it, dee dee bop bop and skip it. For this build, Nord is ideal as it makes hitting resist cap easier and gets us back into our ults quicker, which is important for higher arcs. High Elf also works great and I use Imperial on several setups, which has worked fine for me as well. We have all 64 points in health using the Lover Mundus and Bear Haunch food coupled with tripods. For our gear, first we'll be using one of the most effective infinite archive sets in the game for all classes, the crafted set of Heartland Conqueror. This doubles our weapon trait of charged, giving us a whopping 470% chance to proc status effects. We then couple this set with one of the new Newer sets, Symmetry of the Wield, giving us an additional 200% chance to proc status effects when our health is above 50%, and then something really awesome for the Archive, adds 10% more healing when your health is below 50%. Absolutely perfect for those tough arcs. The gear setup is fairly rigid, but it's not too bad since one of the sets is crafted. You want the Wield set on the neck, ring, weapon, and then either the belt or glove piece. Then Heartland will go around that on the remaining body pieces. We top that off with a monster set of your choice with a line of penetration, Oaken Soul, and then a lightning staff for early arcs and an ice staff for mid to upper arcs. If you can only get one staff, it needs to be ice. Lightning is only for speeding up early arcs. Also on that note, what I personally use on every class for early arcs is a simple crafted set of Order's Wrath on the body to replace Heartland to speed it up in lower arcs. I have the Order's Wrath in all medium, all divines, and all try enchanted. For the main setup, to hit right at the resist cap with minimal wasted stats, you want reinforced on the helm, chest, pants, and boots, and then divines on the belt, gloves, and shoulders. All pieces are try enchanted, all jewelry pieces are with the health trait and increased magical harm enchants, and both staves are charged with the poison enchant. A note for non-Nords, a way to hit resist cap easily is to make both jewelry pieces protective rather than healthy, and that will put you just a hair over the cap of 33k, 33,060 to be exact, as minimal stat loss as you could hope for. Lastly, our full tank ECP is here for you. For our abilities, first we have our two scribed defensive abilities that works incredibly well for the archive. I went over this exactly in the Necromancer version of the build, so I'm going to roll that short clip from that video explaining it for you. If you've seen it already, I'll put a timer on the screen for you so you know exactly where to skip ahead to. First, we have two huge scribing skills. The first is Warding Soul, set up in this way with Shield, Heal, and Major Vitality. You really want to get these scripts if you don't have them. They are so impactful. This gives you an on-use shield, a heal over time, and then once activated, you get Major Vitality, increasing your shield strength and healing received by 12%. So once you pop this, boom, the shield tooltip is now bigger, giving you an even bigger shield and juicing your healing. With one one extended favor vision, this buff extends out to 16 seconds. Any more than one of these visions is overkill. You will for sure be using this more than once every 16 seconds. But having one extension is nice in those one to two sweaty second windows where you get CC'd or something at the end of the 10 second timer. We're using a frost staff due to the tri-focus passive, giving you a meaty shield on every heavy attack. In mid to upper arcs, you'll be weaving in intermittent heavies, one for sustain, two for ferocious support procs if you have that vision, and for constant shield. Building. Weaving in these heavies in between abilities is enough to literally face tank marauders at certain points. A little trick here for you that you can use in many panic areas is to simply hold down your attack button, do not let go, and right as you fling each snowball, tap your shield. This will give you a double shield every two globals, recover your mag use from your ability shield, and float you through most of the tough mechanics of the
in the archive. Here it is on the Thoat Dragon. This little tactic completely shut down any stress it may have caused. Next is healing contingency set up in this way. I've been talking about this constantly for some months now. It's in my opinion that this is one of, if not the best defensive abilities in the game when used in the way that I use it. I know many will disagree, but again, we all play differently. This ability has elevated both many PvP builds on the channel and definitely the archive builds. Some of you have probably heard the explanation a dozen times now, so I won't put you through it again here. But if you haven't, I made a short video I'll link here for you and I'll put in the description for you as well. Plus, you can see it in the gameplay VOD in the description. Even if you are experienced in ESO, if this ability is new for you, I cannot recommend enough that you check out that video, mainly the dodge roll section. This ability introduced some new ways to do some things and the tooltip is not super evident on how to do them. If you do not have access to scribing yet, then you can replace contingency with green vigor and warding soul with either arctic blast or shimmering shield. But please know it will not be exactly the same. The scribe skills elevate the build considerably, but you can still go quite far as the previous version hit arc 10 solo with those skills before scribing was in the game. Next we have entropy. How this works is you spread it on as many targets as you reasonably can. Once you get a feel for it, you'll know how many you're comfortable with. It does damage for 22 seconds, which is an incredibly long time, and heals you for the full duration of each target it's on. In upper arcs, this tactic will end up being your highest healing done by quite a large margin. Next, we have Winter's Revenge. This is our primary chilled status effect generator, which also slows mobs to help you kite, making things easier. Keep dropping this right on top of groups to keep it active and in relevant spots. Elemental Susceptibility. At the start of your run, this is just to provide major breach debuff to targets. But after you get some focused efforts rolling, it becomes the strongest spammable in the game exponentially so. The reason being is every use provides burning, chilled, and concussion status effects to targets and it costs nothing to use. Each focused effort stack boosts each of those damage sources by 500%. So it gets really wild in upper arcs. Finally, your ultimate permafrost. This just melts groups with huge chilled status effect generation and provides you with major protection, making you more tanky. For early arcs to speed that up, we make two changes. We drop entropy for the spammable of force pulse and we drop warding soul for arctic blast. This will considerably speed up your early arc clears. At the start of arc 2 and 3, bring warding soul back on your bars along with the frost staff and this will mostly trivialize any marauders that spawn, especially when taking advantage of the ice staff heavy attack shielding explained earlier in the video. As soon as the marauder dies, pop back on your early arc setup. You can also use DPS food of ghastly eyeballs in lower arcs along with this blue CP change if you prefer more damage. No matter what early modifications you make, at the start of arc 4, you should be in the full tanky version of the build and you'll be good to go. Boom, that's it gamers, nice and simple. So far for the new IA builds, this one is the easiest to do well with in upper arcs. It requires a bit less gymnastics. Don't forget about the gameplay Twitch VOD in the description if you want to see in action. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.